Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. I just got down to the spot. The sun is almost rising. That is just amazing. Whoa. Let me tell you, the benefits of fishing early in the morning, fishing the sunrise. Whew. It's about 80 degrees out here. I just got done with the ride here, hence why I'm covered in sweat. It's humid. It's actually nice. We might see some rain. This is that pond. This is actually my third time here. The second time I just brought bass stuff. Didn't do any good. Otherwise there would have been a video. So later on, as you see down here, you see all that, all that cloud stuff. Later on, we might see some rain. Chances kind of increase between eight and 10, but hopefully we don't have to stay here past 10. We're not actually fishing this pond today, even though there's a little bit of activity. I mean, we might fish the pond, but we're also gonna fish the river right over here. It's moving pretty fast, even though it's dropping. And this is a very, very snaggy area. So yeah, you're right, I've got some ideas. Let's get into it, man. Come on, we gotta get over there. If you've never seen me do a video in this area here on the Mississippi River, you might be seeing all this. Why is there so much driftwood here? You're, you're asking me. Well, we're on the shallow side of a bend and the shallow side of the bend is usually where all the driftwood is gonna get stuck when the river goes down. Cause when the river's high, all this will be underwater where we're at. And the levee's not too far back behind these willows here behind the trailer. So the river can go all the way up to the levee and then when it recedes, it'll leave all this here. You're gonna see even more driftwood throughout this video. It's not just driftwood that ends up over here. Anything that floats, weird stuff, sinister stuff sometimes, but hopefully we don't see any of that. But there is a bunch of weird stuff like wiffle balls, golf balls. Lots of times you'll see bottles of pee. Any alligators here today? Sometimes there's alligators sitting right here. This is the spot. At least this is where I'm starting. This is the upriver end of this pond. I think this pond was created when they put all these rocks here. There is a an island with trees on it and then more rocks after that. I think this might be the deepest part because this is where the current from the river comes in, digs out, and when it leaves over there past the trees, probably deposits, but don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. But we are going to fish this part of the river. It looks like it could be an eddy in here. Just like I said, this is very snaggy, this whole area right here, it's full of revetment. Revetment is basically paving stones, huge pieces of concrete that they laid on, in, on the bottom of the river, usually close to the bank. And it's supposed to stop erosion and help increase the flow. It's about shipping, but it, it creates a very snaggy environment. It also creates a, of an environment that fish like, for some reason, its structure. Sometimes the revetment gets, co gets covered in sediment and then it's not as snaggy, but you gotta think about the wires that break and then are sticking up. They're really thick aluminum wires. Now there's a lot of that here. This is very snaggy, I've tried it, but there's gonna be fish. I've seen big fish roll through here. So there's a couple of ways we can go about fishing this. The first thing we're gonna do is throw out a big bait with no weight. That I believe is either a seven aught or an eight aught circle hook. It ended up in my box, a friend left it in my box. Just thought I'd use it this morning. All right, that's on 40 pound mono and it's just a, a gill head. Let's go ahead and put that out. I don't need to have that bait too far from the bank because I've been noticing fish already since I've been here rolling and busting bait real close in. Now this will probably get snagged but might come out of it. What's gonna happen is the line is gonna get stuck on wire and other things. We're just gonna let the current do its thing with that. Hopefully the current will bring it right up to the rocks really close. If it doesn't, that means it's snagged and we're just gonna stick this down in this stuff right here. 
hopefully that'll hold it all right the next method is float float fishing i bet you guessed it huh so we're going to start out with a regular slip float might switch up to a different type of float a different type of slip float that is because this might become uh, less visible when the sun starts getting in my eyes and it's about there. We're gonna use a nine-aught octopus hook by Gamagatsu, gillhead again. 50 pound mono is my leader and I'm only using, a, I think that's a little less than a half ounce. I know that's a half ounce, but this time we're using braid. This is 80 pound braid. This is a, a rod I use for gar. Yeah, I can't see that. I'm blinded. I don't think I could see the other ones that I have. But anyway, we're fishing this about three feet underneath the cork. This, this float, we're gonna have to actively fish. Luckily, it's not moving really fast. The river is dropping, so it's not a crazy current out here right now. A few days ago, it was a lot crazier than this, but it is dropping. It's below nine feet right now. It's right above eight, maybe. So that's not moving super fast, but I gotta watch it. I gotta make sure that the line doesn't get pulled under cause that could be a problem. If the line gets sucked under by the current, it could wrap around something. So this is going to be a pretty active thing, float fishing this, and then periodically looking over at this rod. One thing I, I need to point out that I'm doing is when the cork gets in front of me, I need to start pulling up some of the slack and as it keeps going to my right here, I keep reeling in a little slack, not super fast, just try to keep less slack out there so I don't end up getting uh, hung on something if the line goes under the water. And when we get almost parallel to the bank here, it's gonna start over again. Oh. Nope, that must have been a gar. Okay, that's cool. It's not torn up. We could put that back out. Oh, I think the big weights, no weights thing is gonna work out, but we might have to switch this hook because it's twice in a row this has been hit by a gar. Back out there. You don't really get a good hookup ratio on circle hooks on alligator gar like you do on catfish with circle hooks. So we might have to change to an octopus style hook. There's another one. Kind of feels like I've given up on the float. Yeah, he let go. I'm going to put this back out one more time. And if that happens again, I'm changing the hook style. Might not have to wait too long. There's a barge going by. Look at the line picking up a little bit. We're getting a bite. That did not take long at all. There's gonna be more gar over here because the water's shallower, so therefore it's warmer. They like warmer water. Something's with it. It's just not running yet. See it? There it goes. There we go. Give him a little line, see if he keeps going. Yeah, he's going. Ooh. 
I think I have a solid hookup this time. Maybe it's not a gar. Or he's just holding on real good because I gave him a little time. Whoa. Oh. Did you guys see that? What was that? He kicked up some water. I couldn't tell if the... I saw the color of the water or the color of the body. If that was the color of the body, this might be an Appaloosa. I don't think it's a gar. Oh, did you see that tail? Some crazy beaver tail action right there. No weights, big baits. I didn't really come out here to catch gar. What do we have here? Got us a nice cat. Yeah, you're right. I knew it was a matter of time. We'd go through a few gar runs and then we'd get a nice, that's a nice blue cat. Come on, guy. Bear with me, people. This is gonna take a second. Here we go. Nice. Oh, we got us a one eye again. Maybe he's been caught before. I take that back. He's not a one eye. Almost looked like that eye was missing, but it's there. It looks kind of messed up. Cool. Just a little over 24 pounds. 24.14. This is awesome. First fish this morning, 20 pound class. Nice. No way it's big baits, baby. Yeah, you're right. Let's see if we can just swim off. There he goes. Oh, come on. Give him a second. There he goes. Nice. Remember what I said? There's always a bottle of pee. Let me get another bait going. I am not changing the hook. I thought about it. I am not in the mood to catch big gar right here on these slippery rocks. So we're gonna stay with the low hookup ratio hook that'll guarantee us hookups with just catfish. Look at that. Hasn't been out two minutes and it's already getting a little tap tap. The slightest of tap taps though. This is going to be probably more productive than float fishing because I can just sit the rod down and watch. With float fishing, I gotta stay really active. We might not give up on float fishing, but we're definitely hyper focused on Big baits, no weights. What do you think, gar or cat? If it's a gar, it's gonna let go eventually, probably. It feels like a cat, it's pirouetting. I felt head shakes. Definitely doesn't feel as big as the first one did. Let 
where's your fight at? There's another head shake right there. Oh, there's a little bit of fight going on right here. I don't think this is a big fish. But it's a second fish. It's number two. Oh, look at you. Here he comes. Oh, I think this ship is going to... Oh, yeah, look at that. We got a flatty. This ship is probably going to put up a lot of waves on us. Good thing this tree is here. Got us a nice flathead. Yeah, you're right. Nice. We're not going to bother weighing this fish. It's probably under 10 pounds for sure. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Let's see here. Bait looks fine. I redid the hook. Let's put it back out. This time, like last time, the bait has drifted all the way over to the rocks that we're on right now. That's where we caught that flathead right off the rocks. It's a good place to find flathead. So come and hang out in the rocks, live in the rocks, hunt around the rocks. I'm just surprised I caught that flathead off yesterday's bait. You know, this is the bait that I caught in the video before this. All right, we've been up against the rocks for about 15, 20 minutes now. I'm gonna recast it as long as we still have bait, which I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, we do. All right, so we've gotten pretty deep into this video, right? Two fish, I know, but we're still pretty deep into the video. And I haven't really explained why I've chosen to do big baits, no weights with mono versus braid. I mean, I do have a rod out here for float fishing with really strong braid on it, but that's on the float. So there's, there's a lot of stuff down there. It's pretty snaggy. It's wire, it's rock, there's sharp edges. Mono is a lot stronger in that situation. Braid in that situation would just get scuffed. It'll cut, it'll break really fast. This one, this can take some abrasion. So if you were gonna come fish like this, no weights, big baits, in a place like this where it's very snaggy, lots of structure, I would go with mono. I would not try braid. You could probably get away with braid, but you're gonna get into a situation where you're gonna lose a fish to the braid getting cut or breaking because of the all the abrasion on it. It'll get frayed up. I see an odd shutter on the line. Could mean that there's something around the bait and it's kind of touching the line as it swims around the bait. Could be like the slightest of a line bite. I'm gonna watch. Remember, the reason why I'm throwing big baits is because I'm not using weights. The bait is the weight. This time the bait is not right up against these rocks. It's stuck somewhere a little further out. I don't think that means it's necessarily snagged, though there is a tight line. It's probably gonna be okay. We're just gonna sit here and see if that is in fact a fish swimming around the bait. Might not be. I just got a slack line and now it's picking back up. I wonder what's up with that. Is this a fish? It is now after eight o'clock in the morning. It seems like the bite has dropped back severely. I've been sitting here for a good while. I haven't had a bite since about 7.15. Yeah, look at that line pick up. There's a tap tap. I'm just gonna sit here. Go ahead, take it. Take it. There's a fish with this. I'm hoping it's a fish and not some blue crab on steroids. Getting a slack line again. Is this a guard just chewing on this? I'm tempted just to pick up the rod and reel up on this fish. Just 
in hopes of uh, getting a hookup, you know, in hopes it's actually a catfish and not a gar. I just don't have any confidence in doing hookups with gar on circle hooks. Let me get in position. There's something with this. Oh, there's a little getting serious now. Oh, got a fish here, but we also, yeah, here we, we're coming up out of something. Oh, this, the line is, this is one of the problems with doing this. Even if I had weight, I would run into this problem, but I've had less of this problem this morning. I haven't actually had this problem this morning, but if I was using weight, it would have been automatic and with other horrible problems. The, the fish has got us into something. The line is actually through something. Are you still there? Yeah, there's a fish still here. What could we do? Well, we could walk down the bank and see if that pulls, you know, helps get the line out of it. But he might be down and through something, you know, like it could be a car down here with the windows rolled down, both the windows, and he just swam through the car. That's not literally what's going on, but, you know, I'm making a joke. Oh, yeah, there's a fish here. I could just play him back to where whatever it is and hopefully he comes through it. Oh, I think we may have just done that. Maybe. Ooh. Did you help us out? Yeah, we got our fish up here now. Oh, it's a nice one too. Looks like a blue cat. We gotta get back to the net. Oh, he's coming over here to us. What do you know? Ooh, ooh, number three. Nice to see you. Look at you. Oh, definitely. Oh, I got him wrapped up. Definitely another, shoot. Let's try to get him unwrapped because it's not me, I haven't done this to him, but he is not looking that great, honestly. He's got a big wound on him and I don't wanna make it any worse. You guys see that? It's not from this line. It's probably from him hustling and tussling on the bed a couple months back. I have my fish grips on me. We're going to have to try to get to this fish and grip them without slipping and falling into the drink. These rocks are slippery. Look at the size of that mouth. My goodness. Got him. Woo! It's a nice one. Definitely in the 20 pound class again. Yeah, you're right. Wow. 24.16. What I tell you, another 20 pound class fish. This is turning out to be a pretty good morning for good size fish. No babies. The flathead being the smallest one. Look at that wound. This is a pretty nice cat. They do get a lot bigger than this, but this is a decent catch. Well worth it. Nice. Time to go back. Whoa, hold on, buddy. You're ready. It's a nice drop off right off these rocks. Hence why I really don't want to slip and fall in there. 
I think I could survive, but last week it would have been a different story. I mean, it was just the current seam was right up against the rocks. So you can see it's much further out. He's got it. Yeah, you're right. You have to be very, very quiet. <laughs> big baits no weights yeah you're right yeah you're right it is now just about 10 o'clock i've stayed longer than i wanted to trying to get that fourth fish the current seam has come closer to me it's just changed out here look look down river that stuff is coming it's thundering in the distance yeah you're right <laughs> it's time to call it whoa about to fall off the log thanks for watching and subscribing we hit 40k last night yeah, 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 you're right. 40K subscribers, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're right. All right, guys, see you next time.